Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing greatest common divisors. Ok, so we've now defined what is meant by a common divisor, let's now move on to the concept of a greatest common divisor. Ok, so the setup is initially exactly the same. So we're going to have two arbitrary elements from my commutative ring, capital R. Ok, so we'll pick A and B from my commutative ring, capital R, and these are the two elements that we're going to be looking for a greatest common divisor of. OK, so let's say that we now do have a greatest common divisor, and I'll just abbreviate this to GCD for greatest common divisor, and let's call it little d. So let's say little d now is going to be a greatest common divisor of A and B. So what does that actually mean? Well, firstly, a greatest common divisor must actually be a divisor, a common divisor of A and B. OK, so I can put that as criterion number one. OK, so we know that uh, being a common divisor of A and B can be stated that as um, the ideal generated by A and B must be completely contained within the principal ideal generated by D. OK, that's equivalent to saying that D must divide A and D must divide B. OK, so there we want D to be a common divisor. And now, greatest. Where does the greatest bit come from? OK, well, I for one found this surprising when I first learnt the definition of a greatest common divisor. I assumed that to be able to do this, you'd need some sort of notion of size on your commutative ring. You'd need some sort of norm function to find on the commutative ring. OK, but in fact, you don't need that at all. You don't need any notion of size on the commutative ring. You can do this just with an arbitrary commutative ring with no more structure defined on it other than the algebraic structures that are already there. OK, so how do you do this? OK, so it has to be the case that for all other common divisors of A and B, those other common divisors divide this greatest common divisor D. OK, so let me write this down. So for all, how should I put this? For all um, D prime, which is an element of the commutative ring, capital R, such that D prime is also a common divisor, so D prime divides A and D prime divides B. Okay, so of course I could uh, write that similarly to um, what we've written here. So I could write that um, the ideal generated by A and B will be completely contained within the principal ideal generated by D prime here. Okay, so for all the other divisors that you can possibly come up with, from the ring. So you go through every single element of the ring and you ask, is it a common divisor of A and B? And you collect all of the elements of the ring that actually are common divisors of A and B. And now these other common divisors must themselves divide the greatest common divisor D. It must be the case that for all D prime, which is another common divisor of A and B, that D prime divides D. And of course, what does it mean for D prime to divide D? It means that D is a multiple of D prime. OK, and therefore that the principal ideal generated by D is completely contained within the principal ideal generated by D prime. OK, so the greatest common divisor's principal ideal must be the smallest possible one, effectively, that contains the ideal generated by A and B there. OK, so to make this absolutely crystal clear, let me describe to you explicitly how you would find a greatest common divisor. OK, so you start off with your elements in the ring. So you start off with A and B, the elements from your ring, which you're going to look for a greatest common divisor of. What you then need to do is find all of the common divisors of these two elements. So you need to find all the elements of the ring such that uh, the ideal generated by A and B is completely contained within the principal ideal generated by that element of the ring. OK, so you need to go through absolutely every single element of your commutative ring and ask, is it the case that the principal ideal generated by this element completely contains the ideal generated by A and B? And for those that it is the case that, that is true, you add them to the list, OK? So you make a list of all the common divisors of A and B in your ring. And then what you have to do is go through this list and ask, is the one of these common divisors which uh, is, obeys this criterion that its principal ideal, the principal ideal generated by that element, and actually I think I'll draw a picture here. So let's say I've got a great big list. Oh, this is going awfully. OK, so let's say I've got a great big list here. So this is my piece of paper. And I've jotted down loads of elements of the ring uh, which are common divisors of A and B. 
okay? And now what I need to do is go through this list and try and find one that obeys this criterion. So if I, for instance, look at this one here, okay, so I look at this second one here, and I, what I'll have to ask is, is it the case that the principal ideal generated by this element is contained within the principal ideals generated by all the others. Okay, so I have to go through all of the others, generate their principal ideals, and ask, is the principal ideal of this one contained within absolutely all of the others? And if that's the case, then it will be the case that all the other common divisors themselves divide this one here, and then we'll call that one a greatest common divisor. So it's a complicated definition, I hope you'll agree. I hope you will uh, acknowledge that this is the intuitive definition, the same definition as you've used classically in the integers. Okay, that all the other divisors are, are you know, divide uh, the greatest common divisor. The greatest common divisor is a multiple of all the other common divisors of the two elements. Okay, so that's explicitly then how you'd actually go about finding a greatest common divisor. Now, the first thing to say is that it does not have to exist. It doesn't have to exist. It might be the case that it doesn't exist. In certain rings, you can find me two elements, A and B, in that commutative ring, and there might be no com greatest common divisor. Uh, you might construct this list of common divisors, and it might be the case that none of those common divisors actually satisfy this property, that the principal ideal generated by them is contained within the principal ideals generated by all the other common divisors. Okay, so common, greatest common divisors do not have to exist is the first thing to say. Okay, the second thing to say is a nice way that you can be sure that a common divisor is a greatest common divisor. Okay, so a nice case where you can be sure that a common divisor is a greatest common divisor. Okay, so if you take two elements, A and B, in your commutative ring, capital R, and generate the ideal generated by A and B here, and it just so happens that this is equal to the principal ideal generated by some element which we'll call D here, then, of course, D is going to be a common divisor of these two, because, after all, uh, the principal ideal generated by D will contain the ideal generated by A and B, so it meets the definition for uh, being a common divisor of A and B. But I claim that if it's the case that the principal ideal generated by D is actually equal to the ideal generated by A and B, then I can conclude that D is not just any old common divisor, but D is actually uh, a greatest common divisor. Okay, so it's a GCD. Now, why is that the case? Well, it's because if the principal ideal generated by D is actually equal to the ideal generated by A and B, then if you think about all the other common divisors, all of the other common divisors, it has to be the case that the ideal generated by A and B is contained within the principal ideal generated by those other divisors. Okay, so it will therefore also be the case that the principal ideal generated by D here will be contained within the principal ideal generated by all the other common divisors, all these D primes. Okay, and therefore it will satisfy the condition that it's contained within the principal ideals generated by all the other common divisors. Okay, so I hope that's uh, pretty obvious that if you do have some element which generates a principal ideal which is equal to the ideal generated by A and B, then that element you can automatically say is the greatest common divisor. Okay, the next comment I want to make is that greatest common divisors are not necessarily unique. There isn't necessarily just one greatest common divisor. You can have more than one greatest common divisor. Okay, uh, so it's not necessarily true that there's only going to be one uh, element which generates a principal ideal which will be contained within the principal ideals of all the other common divisors. However, what you can say is that if you have two greatest common divisors, those two greatest common divisors will generate the exact same principal ideal. Okay, so let me talk you through this. Okay, so we're now tackling the problem of uniqueness. So let's say we have two greatest common divisors for our elements A and B. Okay, so we'll have D1 and D2. And let's say they are both satisfy this definition of greatest common divisor. Okay, so what does that mean? That in both cases, the ideal generated by A and B is contained within the principal ideal generated by D1 and also the principal ideal generated by D2. So I'll just write this out separately here. 
okay, but they also satisfy that greatest criterion, okay, they satisfy the criterion that if you take any other common divisor of A and B, then uh, the principal ideal generated by the greatest common divisor will be contained within the principal ideal generated by that other common divisor. Now, think about this. These two are both common divisors, okay? So if D1 is going to be a greatest common divisor, then it must be the case that the principal ideal generated by D1 is contained within the principal ideal generated by D2, okay? Because remember, to check that D1 is the greatest common divisor, we have to check that the principal ideal generated by D1 is contained within the principal ideal generated by all the other common divisors, and one of those, of course, is D2 here. So we get, therefore, that the principal ideal generated by D1 is contained within the principal ideal generated by D2. But then you can also apply the exact same argument the opposite way round for the principal ideal generated by D2 here. So if D2 is a greatest common divisor, then it must be the case that its principal ideal uh, generated by it must be contained within the principal ideals of all the other great uh, common divisors. Again, D1 is a common divisor, so therefore it must be true that the principal ideal generated by D2 is contained within the principal ideal generated by D1. Okay. Uh, and of course, if those two things are true, uh, then the principal ideal generated by D1 is actually going to equal the principal ideal generated by D2. Okay, so the principal ideal generated by D1 will equal the principal ideal generated by D2. Okay, so if you've got two elements then that are both greatest common divisors for these two elements A and B, then they must generate the exact same principal ideal as what I've shown you there. Okay, now what I want to give you is a little bit more intuition about which elements in a ring are going to generate the exact same principal ideal. Okay, so what I want to ask is if we have one greatest common divisor, can we find other greatest common divisors by finding things which will generate the exact same principal ideal? And of course, anything that does generate the exact same principal ideal, that will always be a greatest common divisor of A and B. Okay, because of course, its principal ideal will then contain uh, the ideal generated by A and B, and it will also be contained within all the principal ideals of all the other uh, common divisors of A and B. Okay, so if not only is it the case that if you have two greatest common divisors of A and B, their principal ideals are the same, but it also works the other way around. If you've got two elements in the ring that have the same principal ideal, and one of them is a greatest common divisor, then you can automatically say the other is a greatest common divisor, because it does meet both of those criteria for being a greatest common divisor of A and B up there. Okay, so now stepping back, what we want to ask is, can we get any uh, good intuition as to how you can find elements in a ring that will have the exact same principal ideal. 